Gene Simmons here. For the past three years, I've been working on something that I've wanted to share with you my entire life. I've gone through hours and hours of music I've recorded and written over the past 50 years to craft my career-spanning solo recordings box set. It's called The Vault. What is The Vault? Well, it's 150 plus never before released songs I've written spanning 50 years, yeah. going all the way back to when I was 14 years old, all the way to some of the songs that became Kiss Classics. 10 CDs right here, all inside the vault. It's finally ready to bring to you. Yeah, that's right, I said to bring to you, because what I'm going to be doing is something that's never been done before by any artist or band. I'm going to hand deliver the vault box set to you and to fans like you around the world. I also want you to have really cool stuff, an exclusive Gene Simmons action figure, an in Gene We Trust medallion, a beautiful full color book packed with photos from my personal archives and my stories behind the songs, and a very special surprise item from me to you. You're not going to believe the things we found. The Vault. Here's how you can get yours.
Um, I would like to, before we start, uh, greet my gorgeous wife, Shannon, who's out in the audience. There she is. Is up there? Other way. Where, where is she? There she is. This is how we do it. Wow, uh, the girl. Uh, Sophie is going to be playing shortly. Um, you should go and check her out. She's pretty smart. Nick is in L.A. chasing skirts, so... <laughs> but, you know, over the years, you guys have made it possible for us to be in America's number one gold record award-winning group of all time. In all categories. And without, without you guys from all over the world, Deutschland, Japan, Sweden, America, Canada, where else? Brazil. <laughs> Australia. Everywhere. Australia. I said Australia. Austria. Okay. Australia. What? Argentina. Mexico. What? Holland. The Netherlands. Scheveningen. So, in all seriousness, without you guys, we wouldn't be here. And I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Paul and Ace and Peter and all the different lineups. So those are the thank yous. And so, here's a sort of behind the curtains of how KISS records were put together. In the early days, when we first started touring, this, we started writing songs, I did, two years after the Beatles came out. The Beatles happened in 1964. That's when we became aware of them. I saw them on the Ed Sullivan Show in 1964. By 1966, I was writing my first songs because I saw them and recording them. And all through the years, some of them sounded like Kiss songs, some didn't have anything to do with that vibe. And over the years, I've collected them all. So when a new Kiss record was coming out, Paul would come in with four to six songs specifically written for that record, and I'd come in with 25 to 35 songs all over the place. So the songs that I wrote that wound up on Kiss records sounded more like Kiss, and all the other songs, some sounded like Kiss, some sounded like the Beatles, some were different vibes, never appeared on records. And so, before I croak, I'm 68 now, the last thing I wanted to do was, you know, after I'm gone, somebody in some record company or someplace releases a retrospective, so the Lost Vault, you know, the Lost Songs, Oh, Gene said, ah, he's dead now, but listen to these tracks. I didn't want that. I wanted, while I'm here, while you guys are here, I want to enjoy this, which is where and why the vault happened in the first place. So I've been planning to do this for 10 years, literally. And about three years ago, I got serious about it. So let me tell you what the vault is. It's 150 tracks with all kinds of people. Some of the songs I wrote with Bob Dylan, three songs. In fact, the songwriting session with Bob is in here. I discovered, I don't know how else you can put it, Van Halen. Three, the brothers Van Halen appear on three songs, including the original version of Christine 16 and the original version of Eddie playing that solo, which I tortured Ace to reproduce, although he hated it. Is that in the... Uh, Would you like to play a little bit of that? Yeah! Yeah! yeah. yeah. So track five, if you could uh, play track five, which is Christine 16. 1978. 
is they actually develop it further, record it, put lyrics to it, or they rap to it. Nowadays, you don't have to sing or create anything, you can just talk. As long as you decide to go up to 7-Eleven and hold up 11, you, know, you can just make up words. That's called rap. You don't have to play an instrument, you can just talk. And that's not a put down, it just is what it is. So all you guys create stuff, and so don't take it for granted. When we did the Gene Simmons Master Class, which you have to get the vault for in order to sign up for, I will show you how you're going to write your own first song. You're going to write a first song in your life, though you've never written a song, and you're going to be playing an instrument in under two hours, though you've never played it before. I swear to you that's true. I've done it before. People are amazed when it happens. They can't believe it, but it's true. Anybody take the Gene Simmons Master Class here that's been there before? What was the name of the song you co-wrote for the first time in your life? What was the name of the song? Hell Yeah! And the song, Hell Yeah, did I write that? Or did you write that? We did. That's right. We wrote it. We sang it. That's right. You wrote it. You came up with it. Somebody, I said to you, get up there, make up your own words, just throw the first thing that comes out, and that's how songs get written. Okay, so I told you it was going to be a short answer. <laughs> so we, can we play a little bit of Tunnel of Love as well? With the sure. sure. So yes. that's track four, Tunnel of Love. This is Suspicious. Track 12. Track 12. Check this out. I think you'll be surprised. Kiss Records is just one of those things. You pick the best in the lot, and there are only certain numbers of slots, and the other songs get put on the side. Some of them are pretty damn good songs. So, 
I wanted to write with Bob Dylan, so I picked up the song and I called his management, and they said, "Well, you know, you can't." Uh, just, uh, no, I said, oh, give me the fucking phone. <laughs> Before I knew it, Bob was on. Hey, how you doing? Uh, hi, Bob. Hey, uh, I was expecting to say, you know, the fuck out of here, Jew boy. You know, something like that. <laughs> no, within two days, he was. He came out of an unmarked van, came up to our house, and out came Bob Dylan carrying an acoustic guitar and going, wow. And within, oh. Within an hour after pleasantries and how do you like to tune and all that stuff, we started working. Six hours later, we came up with at least three songs. All of those are in the 150 unreleased tracks. I don't want to sound like a car salesman, but how many tracks? 150 tracks on our 10 CDs that never before released tracks. Available at GeneSimmonsVault.com. <laughs> but wait, but there's more. What else you get? I'll personally have deliver Zimbabwe. No, fuck, I'm not going to Zimbabwe. <laughs> but I will come to New Zealand. Yes. Brazil? Yes, I will come to Brazil. I will come to where you are. Because this thing, by the way, is a monster. Listen, this weighs 38 pounds. This is about three feet tall. There's an action figure, very good looking, attractive action figure inside. A 50,000 word book. Really the highest quality stuff. Each of the CDs comes there and the 50,000 words are the stories of where I was, who I was with, blah, 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 blah. A lot of photos that have never been seen before. Can we talk about the book for a second? Because I got Mr. Ken Sharp over there obviously helped. He put the book together. So, this is, this is a project I, whenever I would go over to interview Gene, I would always ask him about the box set. He would say, sometime it's going to happen, sometime. And finally, out of the blue, I got an email from him saying, How many years have you been asking me? Probably about 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. And out of the blue, I got an email where Gene said, we're doing the box, are you interested? And of course, I said yes. Because um, that's the type of stuff I'm really interested in, those, those back stories. And, it was such a blast interviewing Gene. I mean, the thing that really impressed me the most about this box set is how engaged he was with this, knowing that this was his legacy, you know, with Kiss, but beyond Kiss, too, to show off all the sides of his, uh, you know, musical personality. And we did hours and hours and hours of interviews. And, and he really dug through his psyche to give, you know, this, is, this isn't two sentences for a song. I mean, there's me here. There's a lot of really interesting information. I thought I knew it all, or close, and I learned a lot doing this, and I know all of you will too. It was a really fascinating project and uh, to go through. Now, I just want to say that there are original, somebody step on your foot, what happened? <laughs> Is she having your child? What's <laughs> I'll leave the check in your room. <laughs> So, uh, Ken was kind enough to actually find some of the lost lyrics. So you'll find lyrics that I wrote in Holiday Inns in Indianapolis. The original lyrics, the original sketches, all that stuff is uh, all in there. I don't know why, I mean, that's the only way I've been anal my entire life. <laughs> I've collected myself. I guess I have an advantage because I, 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 me, 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 way Shannon always says, oh, is this about you again? <laughs> um, <laughs> so I've collected me for all of my entire life, and I, I don't know, I've been delusional about it, so the book contains all that crazy stuff that I never knew anybody would give a squat about, but apparently, a few pe million people on earth do. I just want to say, this is not going to be no salesman talk, no nothing. This ain't going to stores. There are going to be no retail. There's no cheaper version than this. This is the only shape I want this to appear in. I am so fucking sick and tired of iClouds and popcorn cars and Spotify. Music. 
Music is art. I, when I was a kid, you used to be able to hold and you loved your albums. You held on to them. You collected them. You put them on your fireplace. You looked at them. There were books about the art, about the design, and bands used to take, all bands used to take great pride in making as much effort in the music as they did about the package that it came in. It was art. So I, am, I refuse to play by the modern rules where everybody's pressing buttons and your elevator music over there. Fuck that. This is the only shape and form this will ever appear in. It bears noting a Rolls Royce is never on sale. Okay? The only way you can get it is in that one way. It's not for everybody. So I want to say only a few thousand of these will ever be made. Maybe 5,000 on planet Earth. After those are gone, see ya. Thanks very much. It's not for everybody. But because I'm blessed and because I can afford it, I'm going to fly on my dime. I'm paying for the flights, the security, the hotels, the insurance, and all that. And I'm going to deliver this to wherever you are. Literally. Now, I just, it bears noting, if you live in the North Pole, and there's one of you, and you delivered that, fuck that, I'm not going to the North Pole. <laughs> but mostly, almost anywhere you are, if you're upside down in Australia, or... Right, settle down, don't get excited. Some of you, you know, this morning I, I officiated at a wedding in our suite upstairs, and they were from Perth. Are you from Perth? Yeah! I actually met them last night. They are closer to Indonesia than they are to any other city in Australia. That's how lost this city is. Is that the end? Am I right? Yes. Yes. You can, you can go right into the ocean and you're close. You're six hours away from the nearest city. It's unbelievable. But we've been there and we continue to go there. And yes, if there are enough of you in Perth, I'm going to fly to Perth for fuck's sake. Okay, huh? Okay, we'll talk. Indy too. Can you and I continue this conversation so the rest of us don't kill us later? So, one of the things you mentioned is you wanted to kind of show the other side of you, the other side of your music. Can I play a couple of songs that basically show something that you're not expecting from Gene Simmons? Can what do you want to play? play? Can we play uh, a little track called, it's track three, it's called Something Seems to Happen at Night? Sure. <laughs> Before you do that, I just want to say, this box set is the largest box set of all time, spanning 50 years. It starts in 1966, maybe it was 1866, 1966 all the way to 2016. The oldest song 
is a song called My Uncle is a Raft from 1966. And Eskimo Song should be from 1969. And so here it is. I didn't know what the words were. That's called scatting. That's the original version of a song before you actually figure out how the words fit on the song. So I did everything except actually write the lyric. So there are three songs. I couldn't get Bob Dylan to write the lyric. Mr. Kiss, you write it. Uh, Bob, you're the most important lyricist of the last century. You write it. No, Mr. Kiss, you write it. So, you want to? Yeah, let's let's play a little bit of track six. If you started working on peace and you haven't finished, you're more than happy to jump on. You, you got you have a certain kind of area where it can't really be giving you everything. Nobody will really, you know, it's gotta be a certain sound effect. You can be out too outside. That's why I picked on Eve of Destruction, the Barry McGuire thing. It's so almost like a movie title. Wow. It's got a nice feel though. Try something. Yeah. Okay, so that's Bob and I sort of writing the songs. That's in here. I have six hours of that. I had to edit it down just so that... By the way, if you sat down and started listening to the 150 tracks, never before in this box set, the largest one of all time, you'd be sitting on your hind even without going to the bathroom for over 10 hours. 
Literally. 1804. And what year for what? I'm sorry, Bob Dylan? 21 years ago. So that's 2016, uh, 1966, 86, about almost 20 years ago, yeah. Yes. So the question everyone asks when they're coming up to the vault, we're obviously on the KISS cruise. The question is, are the KISS guys in the vault? Give a little insight into who's there, what kind of tracks are All there. the KISS guys are in going all the way back to 1975. Original versions of Calling Dr. Love. Ace is on there playing all the solos. Paul singing harmonies. Uh, there, yeah, all the KISS guys are there. Out of the 10 discs, there are probably three with original versions of KISS songs. Original X-ray eyes, original charisma, original all that stuff. In fact, before Rock and Roll All Night became a song, it was originally called Drive Me Wild. And it was written about a book that Stephen King wrote called Christine. Christine 16. It was about a car that went, had a ghost or something inside. And I was fascinated by a car as a female. Guns are always named ships, you know, their cars. What's the name of the car? Jezebel. Why it's not, it's never a guy named Frank, my car. It's always a girl's name, Lucy. So, you know, B.B. King's guitar, Lucille. Why isn't it Burr? <laughs> so we have a fascination with things as females, and so I had a fascination with the car as a female. You know, twin orbs in the night, I'll drive you wild, you drive me crazy. See what, see what I did there? So that song was written, and then after that, you know, Frankenstein nature of writing and recreating, taking a piece from here and there, it became a song called uh, I Know Who You Are. And then it became a song called Living in Sin at the Holiday Inn. But the other section became Rock and Roll All Night, where you show us everything you've done, I'll keep on doing, blah, blah, blah. you drive me wild, I drive you crazy. Then Paul came in with the chorus and added that on top. So that's how often songs are made. We, I like this piece, but I don't like that piece, and you take a piece and put it together, like a, like a quilt. Anybody want to know anything more? Well, you know, on the box. Well, is Vinny Vincent in the box, Gene? Yes, he is. He's on an unreleased song called I Want to Live. Vinny's playing, he co-wrote. Yes, he is. It's quite a song, actually. Pretty damn good. I'm sorry? You know too much. I'm going to find out where you live. Let me just say there are at least 150 tracks and at least 10 CDs. This is full of surprises. No two vaults will be the same. There is a secret door and a secret compartment on the bottom where Keith and I went to our secret places in Los Angeles and pulled out personal gifts from me to you so that it's not mass produced. They were hand put in there. It could be the dragon boots things, it could be my black gloves, it could be a pair of shades, it could be a few things. So this one and this one will be different. They'll be individualized. And you never know what your secret compartment is going to have. And as I said, there are at least 10 CDs and 150 songs, but I won't say any more. You know, I am so sick and tired when I buy like a cereal box and you see the box and it's this big. And when you open it, you notice that the plastic bag that contains the cereal, the cereal only is there. From there until the top is all air. And then I found out that the cereal companies actually have a machine that fills up the goddamn plastic thing with air so that it fills up the box. So when you get a box of cereal like this, you're getting this much cereal. This, let me just say, 
you're going to get more than you ever bargained for. There are at least 10 CDs, and I'm going to say no more about that. I was going to reference back to the Frankenstein nature thing. I found that fascinating when I was interviewing Gene. You would be playing parts of the songs before we spoke about it. And I think you guys will find it really fascinating. You'll hear elements of songs beyond what Gene mentioned where he would go back to things and would rework something, sometimes several times, um, and pull things into, uh, into songs. So that, that's a really interesting thing I think you guys will uh, enjoy uh, as a creative bonus. And I have to say that uh, I co-wrote a few times, co-wrote Bob Dylan, co -wrote Joe Perry from Aerosmith appears on stuff. I even co-wrote, now Ace appears all over the place playing solos, but he also co-wrote two songs with me and he insisted on singing one of them. Yeah, so here he is. It's track number 11, In Your Face with Ace. <laughs> Vincent, all the variations, Paul, the powerful and attractive, Paul Stanley's on it, everybody. Plus Bob Dylan, Joe Perry, Chubby Checker, uh, the Shirelles, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Dave Grohl, uh, he's not on the oh, okay. 
Little Richard's now. Little Richard, Little Richard's now. I'm sorry? How many tracks are there? There are at least a hundred and fifty. <laughs> you know too much. <laughs> you know, and we're so disappointed often in life because whatever it is you're expecting, you know, there's, there's a sense in Mondo. Everybody's trying to take the easy way out. I don't want to do that. I always want to give more. We've always, the band, I have to say, I'm proud to say, we always had a philosophy of giving you more, putting the band together we never saw on stage. So early on, when we were dirt poor, we were playing Anaheim Stadium to 50,000 people headlining, and I was making $75 a week. But we wanted to make sure when you bought a Life One, you got a big booklet, it was a double album for the price of one, or tattoos, or used condoms, like whatever it was. <laughs> we wanted to give you extra stuff, because how many times have you gotten anything and you're, and you're disappointed in it? So that's always been the philosophy. Let me tell you something. This is gonna fill you up. This is, it is. More than you, uh, let's just say there's more. This is all I'm gonna say. Speaking of more, before we open the floor to some questions, there's an acoustic guitar there, and it would be a shame. Oh, so you guys don't know, I can play drums on Plastercaster, the original version, which you'll hear in the, in the vault. I'm playing drums, all the guitars, all the background vocals and stuff. I actually started playing guitar first, uh, bass was my second instrument, so, oh, look at that. The union allowed you to do that? <laughs> so, the first track on the box set, the first track you ever recorded, is a little track called My Uncle's a Raft. Uh, we have about 10 minutes. We have about 10 minutes left. And you know, as we're going along, people will shout out questions, but I think for maybe for the last 10 minutes, if we could get a little, uh, little bit of live rock and roll, I'd do the bit. Oh, 
finished with that, I went, fuck, I'm the Beatles, look at that, that's the best thing I ever heard. It's horrible, it's horrible, I didn't know, I was just I was so amazed. Here's the thing about creating your own thing is, it never existed before. The United States government, the Library of Congress gave me a copyright, that means, that song, da 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 I own that copyright. That baby was never alive before I created it. And so from then on, hundreds and hundreds of songs. There have been hundreds and hundreds of songs. This has been a public service announcement. <laughs> so some of the stuff you hear on the record where you think uh, either I'm playing bass or Paul is playing guitar or aces, it's not. Either on the Beatles records or the Stones records or Hendrix records, it's often not what you think. This, that's me on guitar. Because the guys refused to go. I'd actually bend it out of shape because it's wrong. This is the way it's right. But it's like white food, it's not Spicy, it's not. It's a spicy meatball. See, it's got a little, it's got a little swagger. So, what else do you want to know? Make it sit. Make it sit. Oh my God. Huh? I'll be what? There will be about five thousand on Earth. Yes, the original two versions of We Are One is in the box. Best song ever. I'm sorry? Best song ever. I appreciate it. Nice of you to say. What's on the inside of the door? What's on the inside of the door? That is where a plaque will live for the executive producers, the people who are part of the producer experience. Their names will be engraved in a plaque that will live on the inside of the door of the vault. So, Spielberg does this, the best directors do this. Before January, you can go to GeneSimmonsVault.com and find out more if you'd like. We invite you to do focus groups with us. Sienna Hernandez over there. Let us... That was Sienna. That's her and his mom. Was that Sienna's mom or Sienna? Hi, Sienna. Hi. So the entire family uh, came into New York at Electric Lady Studios, where we started. And we actually went through quite a number of songs. I like that. I don't like that. It's too long. It reminds me of that. And you make notes. And Spielberg does the same thing. You listen to the people, and then you make changes in reaction to that. So we're actually, this is not going to start being delivered until January. By then, we will have done all the producer experiences. And by the way, there's a Gene Simmons party home thing. Uh, if you're crazy, I'll do it. If you want me to come to your house or your club with 25 of your friends and just you and us party out, have music, karaoke, I'll pet your dog or whatever else is. I'll mount your dog. Whatever. Whatever is permissible, uh, and it'll be a private party. You want that? You're crazy enough to do it? I'm, I'm with you. Go to GeneSimmonsVault.com, the Gene Simmons party. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was that? What's the answer? Are you? You bet she's coming. There's another chick within a thousand miles of that place. My beloved is going to be right there.
What? Yeah. Uh-huh. 